It's good to be with you this morning. We're, we're continuing our series. We've got a couple more weeks of a series that we're doing on peace. And to, to just catch you up, and maybe most of you have been here the last couple weeks, but in case you weren't, to catch you up, we, we basically said this, that, that Christ's invitation to us um, is to be peacemakers in the world. So, so one of the Beatitudes, when you go to Matthew, this great Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says these words to the crowds, to the disciples and to the crowds, Blessed are those who are peacemakers they will be called children of God. And so part of this call that Jesus has in our lives to be about making peace, we've said this in this whole sermon series, the only way that you and I can be peacemakers is if we are at peace first. The only, the only way that we can make peace is if we are first at peace. And so what we've talked about over the last few weeks is this. If we're, if, as long as we are at peace with God, then we can be at peace with ourselves. When we're at peace with ourselves, then we can be at peace with others. And when we are at peace with others, then we can go about the peacemaking ministry that Christ has invited us to, called us to be a part of in this world. And so we've taken a look at our relationship with God, and everything, all of this starts with this. We've affirmed this, this whole series. Our God is a God of peace. He's a God of order. It's the first thing he did in creation was he spoke into creation, and he brought order and he brought peace to a situation that was completely chaotic and dark. This is our God. This is the God who is a God of peace to say... I want to bring peace and order to chaos. And he wants to do that. And he speaks into our lives and he comes into our own chaos and says, peace, be still. This is, this is our God. This is what his ministry, this is the work that he invites us to be a part of as well. So we, we talked about this. It all flows from our relationship with God. Peace doesn't come from within. As much as we look within, we know this peace comes from God. It doesn't mean that there's not some good things that we can do to look for inner peace, but ultimately we know if we're going to be at peace with ourselves, it all stems from our relationship with God. And it's the same thing this morning. The same thing is true if we are going to be at peace with others. If we're going to be at peace with one another, it all starts with our relationship with God. Here, here's what Paul says. Paul in, in Romans. I've got a couple verses I want to show you. So in Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 18. This is in uh, the New Living Translation. Pretty, pretty simple verse. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. The NIV will say this way. If at all possible, do everything that you can, do everything you can to, to be at peace with everyone. And this comes into a context, a passage where Paul's talking to the church. He's specifically saying, be at peace with those within the church. Be at peace with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's the same premise that Jesus says, you've got to love one another here if we're going to love everyone in the world. We're going to be at peace with those outside the church. We've got to start here. Do whatever you can to be at peace. Go back to the definition just for a second. What does it mean to be at peace? That things are as they ought to be. That things are right. That things are harmonious. That things are good. And if you ask yourself this, if you do a catalog of your relationships, so we can think in the church, you can think outside the church, are you at peace with everyone? Are you at peace with everyone you know? Let's, let's go there first. Obviously, we don't know everyone, but the people that you know, the people that you, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, your brothers and sisters in Christ at church, is your relationship with everyone as it ought to be? Is it, is it harmonious? Is it, is it right? Or is there chaos? Is there brokenness? Is there bitterness? Is there hurt? Because I, I, I'm realizing this. There's another passage. We're going to take a look at Colossians. If we, if we are going to be at peace with everyone, if we're going to do all that we can, be to, if we're going to do all that we can to be at peace with everyone, everyone, here's the one thing that's required. Forgiveness. If you and I are going to be at peace with everyone, the one thing that is absolutely required is forgiveness. Because you and I know this. We all are broken people. And every single one of us is in need of forgiveness. And we need that from God, and we need that from one another. In any relationship you're in, you better believe if you're going to ever get restored and relationship's going to be what it ought to be or maybe used to be, some of us will ask this question. We, we long for this. I just wish that relationship, I just wish it could be what it used to be. I just wish it could be, we were so at peace, things were so good, and, and then somebody said something, somebody did something, someone hurt me, someone said this, someone did this, and now there's, 
There's tension. There's alienation. There's brokenness. There's, I don't want to hang around that person anymore because they hurt me. Things aren't as they ought to be. And this can happen in any relationship. Kids, with parents, husbands and wives, best friends, every, every relationship that we have. Things can get chaotic. Things can get broken. There can be hurt. And so we, we've got to practice. We've got to be willing to embody and practice forgiveness. It's the only way that we're going to be at peace. It's, it's, it's a key component to this. I want to show you this passage. So here's what Paul will say in Colossians. A few verses out of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, 13 through 15. I love how the, the New Living Translation says it. Make allowance for each other's faults. I just want to stop there for a second. If you and I want to live at peace with everyone, this is a great place to start. Make allowance for other people's faults. So, so let, me, let me say it this way. So before we even keep going, we're going to get into the forgiveness language here in just a moment. If you and I, if we could truly live this by the grace of God, if you and I start here mentally to say, I know I'm dealing with other human beings in every relationship that I have. And when I deal with human beings, I know that they have faults. I know they have weaknesses. I know they have areas of brokenness in their life. Because I know that's true in my life, too. And if I, if we can learn to live with this understanding of make allowance, I look at it this way, create some space up front. Create some space up front with every relationship you have to say, ha, I'm going to make an allowance for the faults of this person. So that when there is a fault, the next line's a whole lot easier to do. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect Harmony, peace, wholeness, reconciliation. In 15, and let the peace, the wholeness, the shalom, the well-being of God, let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you and I are called to live in peace. That our relationships, as they are as they ought to be. That they are right. That it is good. That it is a relationship that is such that life can flourish. And this is for every relationship. Husbands and wives. Are you at peace with one another? This is for siblings. Are you at peace with one another? This is for parent and child. Are you at peace? And for us, if we learn to do this, if we go back, Kelly, if you can go back to the, the first part of Colossians there. If we can start here, if we can make allowances for each other's faults. I, I believe this is, this is so important by the grace of God. If I can start to think this way in my relationship with Lindsay, if I can think in my relationship with Wesley and Kate, my two children, if I can think this way about my church family, if I can think this way about my coworkers, if I can think this way about my neighbor who mows the grass and gets into my driveway all the time, come on now, clean the grass off my driveway. If I can think this way about every relationship, if I go in saying, I know that they're human, there's a pretty good chance, probably a hundred, that there are going to be some faults, there are going to be some mistakes, there are going to be some offenses. And sometimes here it is too. It's not always willful, but sometimes it is. Sometimes we do things, and this is why sin, when we talk about it's a willful sin, we'll say we do things sometimes to intentionally hurt people. And some people will do things intentionally to hurt us. But my hope is this, that within the church, this is Paul's hope in Romans and Colossians. The hope is this, that we will live at peace with everyone. Hopefully our intentions, God is so shaping us, that you and I get to a place of transformation that we don't intentionally hurt anyone. But guess what? We're still human. And we still have faults. And we still have bad judgment sometimes. And we still have ignorance sometimes. And we say things and we do things that hurt. And the other person a lot of times has no idea that we hurt them. And I was reading a book, a chapter of a book. It's called Total Forgiveness by R.T. Kendall. And it's a great book. And he says this. He said, 
in all my years of ministry, I think I've, I've come to this conclusion that probably 90% of the offenses that people feel where they've been sinned against, 90% of the time, the other person who offended them has no idea. And so what happens is this. Rather than being at peace with everyone, we just choose bitterness. We would rather just hold a grudge and be bitter, and then we never are at peace. And then that affects every relationship as well. Because you and I refuse to practice forgiveness. And the invitation is this. This is the God of peace who says, the only way that my people and I will be at peace, I'm going to have to forgive them. And, and the need gets so great in the Old Testament. And when Jesus is born, I love this, when Jesus is born, Matthew, the very beginning of Matthew, today a Savior is going to be born, and his name is going to be Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Because he will forgive his people of their sins. Because he will do whatever is needed so that they can be right. So that things can be as they ought to be. So that there can be peace on earth. The only way that we're going to be at peace with one another is if we practice forgiveness. And, and there's, three, there's three components at least to this. One, you and I have to be willing to offer forgiveness. You and I have to be willing to receive forgiveness. And you and I have to be willing to ask for it. When we talk about our relationships with each other, we've got to be willing to offer forgiveness when someone needs it. And we've got to be willing to receive it when someone offers it to us as well. And you and I have to be humble enough to ask for it. And I think this, if R.T. Kendall is right in this whole 90%, whether that statistic is accurate or not, it does happen. That people, we... We choose not to forgive people because they hurt us or violated us or offended us, and we don't ever go tell them. And so we just live with that. And all kinds of things, and this is why Paul will hit on it in multiple letters. Don't let bitterness take over your heart. Don't let resentment build up. Do whatever you can to be at peace with everyone. Be willing to forgive just as Christ Jesus forgave you. We've said this in the sermon. I said at the very beginning. We are as we ought to be. We are at peace when we are like him. We are at peace. We are as we ought to be when we are the way he created us to be, to reflect his image, to, to bear the image of God to the world. And so when you and I are like him, when we are at peace, we are as we ought to be. We are people who are marked and characterized by the God who offers forgiveness. By the Messiah, the one who restores us and forgives us so that we can become a people who are like him, who offer forgiveness to. And I look at all this and say, it's, it's, it's easy conceptually, but oh, it's so tough to practice this. Because you and I, when we read Colossians, and it says, make allowance for one another's faults, I want to ask the question, how many times? 70 times 7? At least 490? How many times do I make an allowance for someone else's fault and violation and offense? And Jesus' response to Peter when he asked that, how many times must I forgive my brother? 7? No, I tell you 70 times 7. Keep forgiving and stop counting. Keep forgiving and stop counting. That's how many times. Because that's who God is. The God of peace. The God who says I'll do whatever I need to do so that humanity can be at peace with me. And I'm going to have to offer forgiveness even when people don't ask for it. Our God is the God who says I will take the initiative every time. And I invite you to be a people who are like me. So the church, we should be the kind of people who initiate forgiveness. Offer it. If, if I were to ask you this morning, if you take the catalog of all your relationships that you have right now, let's start with the church first. Think of our church family. 
could be other church family, doesn't matter, but think of the church right now and say, is there anyone that I am withholding forgiveness from? Is there someone who has hurt me? I know this, and let me just tell you, your pastor has faults. I have lack of judgments and I have ignorances. By God's grace, I hope that I, I've never, I hope that I've never intentionally hurt anyone in this room. But there's probably a good chance that I, I may be very well, I could have hurt some of you. And may have hurt some of you. And that is maybe true for all of us when we ask that question to say, there's a good chance that maybe we have hurt someone or someone has hurt us. And what Christ is inviting us to do is do all you can to be at peace with everyone. And the way for that is make allowance for other people's faults and forgive just as Christ Jesus forgave you. Because we were made for peace. We were made to be harmonious. We were made to be in right relationship with each other. And when we can be at peace with everyone, then we can take the next step, which is next week's sermon, but to be peacemakers in the world. To take that powerful good news and that message of what we've experienced in and through Christ Jesus, we practice it as a body. We practice it as the body of Christ, and we go and we live it out in the world. Is there anyone that you say, I... I I've chosen bitterness. I've chosen to just stay angry. I've, cho I've chosen to just hold a grudge. Well, they ought to know what they did. And if they're not going to come to me, well, I'm not going to forgive them. Can I tell you, that is not like Christ. That is not what our Savior is like. Is there someone that we need to ask forgiveness from because we know, very well know, we have hurt them? And yet we say, well, they deserved it. They don't deserve forgiveness. That's why it's called forgiveness. That's why it's called grace, because none of us deserve. But that's who our God is. And that's what he invites us to. Do you need to offer it to anybody? Do you need to ask from, it, from anybody? And most of us, all of us, to whatever degree, we all need to better learn how to receive it when someone offers it to us. I don't know about you, but when the forgiveness of Christ came to me and continues to come to me, and every time I gather around a table and practice communion, I'm reminded of this is the embodiment of Christ Jesus, who is our peace. Where Christ says, come to my table once more and receive my forgiveness. Because it's who I am. Come and receive my grace and forgiveness. Because that's who I am. Because he wants to be at peace with us. And he wants us to be at peace with him. And he wants us to be at peace with one another. In every relationship. He's going to take the next step next week. He has to say, how are you, how are you to be at peace with even your enemy? How do you love your enemy? But Christ offers himself once more and says, come to my table, receive my broken body and shed blood once more, and receive the peace that passes all understanding. And I don't want you to just receive my peace. I want you to take it and I want you to go give it. I don't want you to just receive my forgiveness. I want you to be a people who are marked and characterized by my forgiveness. The only way we can be at peace with everyone, we have to practice freedom. And in this moment at the table, we receive it. And before we receive it, I want to spend just a few minutes of prayer together. And just to let God probe our hearts. This is, this is the prayer of the psalmist. Oh God, search me and examine me. Look in my heart, probe the depths of my heart. See if there's any wicked way. See if there's any bitterness there. See if there's any grudge there. See if there is any sense of, I'm withholding forgiveness from someone. See if there's any sense of, I need to ask for forgiveness because I know I've hurt someone. But I haven't taken that step towards peace. And let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And maybe today, maybe this week, this is what I love the scripture calls us to this. Before you come to the altar, this is before the offering even. Make it right with your brother and sister in Christ. If you need to ask for forgiveness, go to them. If you need to say to someone, hey, 
You maybe don't even know this, but you really hurt, you really hurt me. Those aren't easy conversations, but they're so needed for us to be at peace with each other. And to be at peace with God. And to be about his peacemaking mission in the world. So I'm going to invite you to just bow your heads, and, and I'm praying the same prayer with you. I was thinking about it all week. I'm like, Lord, am I, is my fault, one of my faults, the fact that I'm ignorant of the way I have affected people? Is one of my faults that I'm just blind to the fact that maybe I've hurt a handful of people and I don't even know it? Or maybe I have said something and it was out of pride or arrogance, maybe. And it really wasn't intentional, but it just came out. But let us pray together. I'm just going to give us a moment of silence. If you'd like to pray there, if you'd like to pray at the altars, forever. But just ask that God speak to you. And we'll gather around the table here in a few moments. And celebrate the fact that our God is a God of peace who says, I offer my forgiveness to you once more. It's a free gift. It only requires our response of faith and trust in his offer and generosity for you.